Australian Navy's troop transport HMAS Sydney heading for Vung Tau, Vietnam. On board are Australian troops and equipment bound for the war zone. The diggers who have made the journey call her the Vung Tau Ferry. The former aircraft carrier today has a two-fold role, serving primarily as a fast troop transport, but also acting as a training ship for young officers and sailors receiving their early sea training. On this trip, Sydney is carrying 500 men of the 8th Battalion, and they're on their way to Vietnam to relieve the 9th Battalion. This voyage will be no pleasure cruise for these young diggers, and a tough army training program will continue throughout their stay on board. While on board, the soldiers will also share some shipboard duties. This group, for instance, will augment the ship's fire party, and it means some extra drill in firefighting for them. Small arms practice, PT, lectures and training films will take up the rest of the day. Meanwhile, a work party of sailors prepares to give Sydney's flight deck a fresh coat of paint and the colour, a nice shade of jungle green. There will be some breaks in the routine on the long voyage north. Today, Sydney is rendezvousing with a tanker to refuel. Refueling at sea is a skillful operation and one which the diggers watch with interest. After the first line has been fired across, hoses can be rigged and passed between the two ships. Once the fuel lines have been connected, hundreds of tons of oil will need to be pumped across to top up Sydney's fuel tanks. Meanwhile, a jack stay has been rigged for it to transfer stores to the troop ship. The stores transfer provides the soldiers with an opportunity to share another shipboard task. One advantage of bringing the troops to Vietnam by sea is that the voyage helps the soldiers acclimatise to the tropics before they reach Vung Tau. But Sydney is nearing the end of her run, and the Vietnamese coast is close now. At first light tomorrow, Sydney will anchor in Vung Tau Harbour. Dawn sees the diggers fully kitted and ready to be taken ashore in Sydney's landing craft. From now until the troop ship sails again in a few hours' time, unloading of troops and equipment will follow a tight schedule. While the troops have been preparing to leave the ship, the Australian Army vessel Clive Steel has secured alongside Sydney and has started taking on heavy equipment to transfer ashore. Since the first Vietnam trip in 1965, Sydney and her cargo specialists have developed unloading techniques to a high degree of efficiency. On her early runs to Vietnam, Sydney took as long as six days to turn around. Today she will be sailing again less than six hours after arrival. Unloading continues while the men of the 8th Battalion are taken ashore. There they will meet up with the advance party of the battalion which has flown here ahead of them. While the Sydney is at anchor, a diving team continually patrols around the ship. 
After landing the men on the beach, the landing craft bring back members of the 9th Battalion who are returning to Australia after completing their tour of duty in Vietnam. For these battle-weary diggers, Sydney represents the first step on the way home. This is the second war in which HMAS Sydney has played a major part. In her former role as an aircraft carrier, Sydney served with distinction in Korea, where she carried out aerial strikes in support of the United Nations Command. Between September 1951 and February 1952, she steamed 40,000 miles in operations and her aircraft flew well over 2,000 sorties. Her fighters mounted aerial strikes against North Korean tanks, trains, bridges, supply depots and troop concentrations. On one day alone, her aircraft made 89 sorties, the highest number achieved by any aircraft carrier in Korea. HMAS Sydney is proud of her name. The first HMAS Sydney served with distinction in World War I. The second Sydney won honours in World War II. And this, the third Australian ship of the name, has carried the tradition into Korea and now Vietnam. The last landing craft full of Australian soldiers hits the beach at Bung Tau. This marks the end of another job for Sydney. It means the beginning of a new one for the diggers.